Hello there, I'm Tim and he's John and this is us exploring space in Elite Dangerous. I thought what I'd do, since I've gotten quite good at the exploratory stuff and worked out how it all works, I thought I'd share some of that wisdom with uh, my good co-host here. So here we are in my so, spaceship. So wrong, you're not trading. <laughs> I don't do the trading, I got a bit frustrated with it, I kept, kept losing money all the time. Uh, so no, as you can see, Explorer Rank Scout. That's what I seem to have latched onto. That's, that's the blue one. I'm going for that. But Tim, everyone says you can't make money exploring. Ah, well, we're about to show you how to make money exploring. Yes, I imagine if you just sort of scoot about pinging suns and descanning them, then you'll make a couple of hundred credits here and there. We're off to a new system and I'm going to show you how to explore the whole thing. So there I go, jumping up. This is my Viper. I was very proud of it. Don't tell anyone, but I've got no guns on it at all. <gasps> <laughs> I, got, I got four four normal pulse lasers, because that's all I could afford after I bought it. I took the shields off my Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> we can get more cargo in here. <laughs> to the unknown! I took the shields off my Cobra. Guess what I did on the way out the station the did first you, time. Did you smack straight into the wall? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I'd taken the cargo bay out of mine so I can jump further, but I uh, can't really do anything when I get there. D-scan. You'll need a D-scanner and any ship at all for this. Right, here I come. New Ooh, system. Red star. That's red star there. Uh, this is me trying to fuel scoop a star that won't fuel scoop. Um, <laughs> I have a fuel scoop on board. So the very first thing you do, as soon as you turn up, it will give you the star for free. Now I've done the D-scan. See? Discovered three new astronomical objects. Those will be your innermost planets. The D-scan is on your starter sidewinder, but isn't mapped to a fire group. So you may need to manually fiddle about with that so it becomes available as a and secondary And once it weapon. is, it's on the left clutch button on your joystick. I'm using mouse and keyboard throughout for this. So, first of all, find the sun. So we've, we've pinged the sun. We now know it exists, but it comes up as an unexplored object, which I've just selected on the side panel there. And there it is down on the targets, stuff in the lower left. Target it, point at it. Now you see the little whirly hexagon scanning in the bottom corner there? That's that's the important bit. It's not enough to know they're there, you've got to know what they're called as well, which looking at them sternly for a bit will tell you. There we go, Takes scanning, a while. scanning. Ooh. There we go. So it's an anarchy system. You notice from the uh, barcode uh, GUID system name that I'm quite far out from known space. So here's the system map. Here's what it's given you so far. System it's a very friend. boring system. There's not a lot here. System map will always give you any stars that are there, presumably because they've been found by remote astronomical observation and so on. But from there on, it's up to you to find the rest. Look how big the galaxy is. There I am. I'm somewhere out, out of human space and heading for the frontier. And beyond the frontier. It's crazy. So, so we, we did the D-scan from the star, and that's given us a whole bunch of uh, asteroid clusters which you saw on the system map there, a little asteroid belt. Uh, the tens, I don't know how many typically there are in one of those, but you'll end up with multiple explorable locations per asteroid belt, and they all come up quite close around the sun usually in this case. So here I am scanning one. Got to get to about three light seconds or so, four light seconds before it starts to pick up. The distance away from the thing you need to be before it will start to scan effectively varies by the object. Usually it's the size, so great big planets tend to pick up from 100 light seconds away, moons from 8 or so. And I think the scanner makes a difference as well. Yeah, I can't remember what gubbins I've got in here. I think they're a collection of, of Ds and Cs suitable for the Viper. Uh, the stuff you get in the starter signed is easily up to the job of doing what we're all doing here today, because it's mostly about using your eyes. So, so there's a bit of a tedious clear up to begin with. The very first things it picked up with the D-scan was a whole bunch of asteroid belts. So we're going to go and just tick those off the unexplored list. Uh, the starter D-scanner does, I think, 500 light second radius. Yes, it does. So I looked at that earlier. And it sounds awesome as well. I, I, I often just blast it for the hell of it because in space everyone can hear my sonar. I think it works by just being really, really loud and bouncing noises off of planets. I've seen the Wing Commander movie. Sound is important in space. <laughs> It's very good. So we've got three of those. Yeah, here comes the next one. I love the music in here. Just the sound of the sound design in general in this game is astonishingly good. Just the sound of the ships as your fly is mesmerising. Mm, absolutely. The sort of high-pitched whine as it goes through. Who cares if space is silent? Not in here. It's brilliant. There we go. Very photogenic sun there. A little flare there. Look. Lovely. That yellow line is the do not cross this line if you want to not explode line, so be careful with that. It's a handy line, that. Yeah, well, it's, it's awkward when you're doing the first sweep where we're doing these asteroids, because the asteroids are all scattered around the sun, and sometimes to find the next one you have to go through the sun. Uh, but don't make that rookie mistake. Go round the sun instead, because um, it doesn't like it doesn't like you frame, frame shifting through a star. No. Mm. Okay, so right now, here's where the real work begins. We've cleared up the list of unknowns from the initial ping. What we need to do now is get a bit of speed. This is all to do with parallax parallax background stuff. So you're going to have to do look quite a bit of squinting here. Yay! There's me just blasting it for the hell of it. Sometimes you get lucky and hit stuff, but that's not the way to do it because most star systems are thousands and thousands of light seconds wide and your initial 
blah from the star will only get you the inner 500. Am I going to have to take two photographic plates and overlay them and compare the differences? No, because our spaceships go many, many times the speed of light. Here I am ramping up some speed. You need to get to about 30, 40 C, ideally. And also, you need to get far away from the sun so that you don't get the washed out overexposure thing going on. You can actually see stars now that we're a bit far away. Physics called they would like a chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fog or something, I don't know. <laughs> So now, here we go. Now, so to begin with, we just start gently sweeping sideways. Usually, it is the first the first sweep is quite tricky because you have no idea where the ecliptic plane is. So there we go. I'm just looking out the side window. That's the that's the star we were in orbit around. If we have come quite far out now, and we're going pretty pretty fast. So now, I don't see any. What can we see? Can you see it? I can see it. Oh, it's one there. Yeah, there it he is. He said, "Point it, at the screen," <laughs> which they can't see at home. But yes, in the middle. There, I am tracking it, keeping it in the centre of vision as I steer the spaceship round to point at it. He knows once you're pointing at it, it stops moving. This is all to do with parallax and uh, trying to tell the difference between a star that is a real thing, a planet or whatever, and a star that's part of the uh, the backdrop. And that's the basic fundamental technique of finding anything in these in these star systems. So now we've noticed it's starting to get slightly bigger. I'm just having a quick look around, see if there's any others. This one I'll do for now. Find one. Once you've, once you've located one that moves across the background when you're going sideways, you need to then... Uh, what are we doing here? Looking at the map for the hell of it. Good. Obviously bored. Um, yes, it's, they can be quite far away. You can still see them. There we go. Now, that's, this is a checking procedure. If, you, if you've if you lost track of it or you're not sure that you're actually going towards a real thing, just try turning about 5, 10, 15 degrees sideways and keeping an eye on the point. If it starts to move sideways against the backdrop, you know it's something you can actually fly to. Here it comes. Now, once you get near enough... Yay! There we go. Ooh! It's my Reaper co-pilot there. He's found something. So, we've got two there. That's quite lucky. And what we've got is a binary pair of planets there that are orbiting around each other. So, we get two for the price of one with this one. So, you need to come down, back down to speeds of, of a, an appreciable slow nature. There we go. Now we can actually point at them. So, highlight. Press T to target. There we go. And there's our little whirly on the bottom of the side corner there. It's found two new unknown items, which is added to the star chart. Notice that the star charts start with just the star, and it's up to you to fill them in as you go. Unless it's a really high populated system with lots of space stations, they, then they tend to just tell you for free. And then we'll get the other one. There it goes. Whirly, whirly hexagon. I think, I'm think i not sure if it's range or speed that makes that go faster, but uh, it can take a very long time if you're quite far away and it's just sat there. So might does pay to accelerate towards it. Can you ever find space stations this way? I've never found a space station that wasn't already broadcasting its position on the system map. That doesn't mean that there aren't out there, so, but I haven't found any. So. so there we go. Now, you notice, now here we go, three, and the other one was two. And there's, there's a suspicious planet-shaped gap. Ooh. Now, this is a bit of a cheat. It already knows how many planets <laughs> are there and is numbering them correctly. So what happens is that you'll, you'll track around looking for a little dot and find one and zoom in, and what you end up with is planet two, and you have no idea where one is, but one is obviously inside the orbit of two. So that again, then gives you a clue that there's something to find and roughly where to go about finding it. Okay. So, so what we're doing, here we go, we're tracking again. <laughs> And we're looking. Play, play along at home. There you can see the star on the left. Now, things you've already found have a sort of half bracket around them, that circular thing on the left there. I think that was just speculatively pinging there. You never know. I have actually found pla whole planets and asteroid belts just just blasting that randomly sometimes, so you never know. Plus, it makes the noise. It's great. Do you fly often just looking at your scanner? Yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm trying to do here is find, determine the flat ecliptic. Plane okay, yeah. Between the star, which is on the left, and the little planet group behind. Now, the problem with this one is that they're binary planets and they don't have an orbital ring that goes around the star, which means that you don't get the clue. So you have to sort of try and keep it roughly flat with all the planet, all the planets and stars on with their stalks retracted, so that you're on the same plane. And then, yeah, here we go. We're just we're just speculatively casting our gaze across the sky now, which can get a little bit tedious. It's very much a question of patience and also very sharp observational skills. That's me screwed then. <laughs> Well, I imagine you'll have lots to teach us about trading in a future video. But, uh, yep. Buy high, sell low. What more do you need there to know? There you go. I, I, was, I was getting that wrong, doing the other way around, which apparently is not right. I think you'll find you were doing... I was getting confused with the import and export stats, which I don't think are oh, quite what I thought they were. No, exactly. So I sold the cargo bay, put a fuel scoop in, and headed 400 light years away from civilization. So here we are. Um... Okay, so we're still tracking. This is quite tricky if the ecliptic plane is in line with the galaxy, because you end up with this big white band that you're yeah. trying to track white dots against, which gets a bit awkward. But yeah, let's just sort of sweep around gently, sweeping, 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 shout when you see one. <laughs> oh, is it there already? Uh, I'm not sure if it's there already. I think I might have to turn a little bit. 
just checking. There are sometimes planets that go up and over that are well off the ecliptic, and they're, they're a bugger. Usually you won't even know they're there unless you've got a missing number in the sequence, in which case you can then start looking. Destroy the planet! There's a planet! No, that is just one of the unidentified signal sources. That's, that's it generating some content for oh. me to do. But, oh, I'm not interested. I won't be dissuaded. I'm going to find this planet. You generate any guns anyway. Drop out of warp and find one barrel of industrial waste or something. Which is marked as stolen. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially this far out. I mean, <laughs> I'm about nine systems of anarchy to the nearest star base at the moment. I think I'm going to have trouble. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically keep going out and then come back at some point with like 100,000 million credits worth of map data, assuming I survive. It's a bit of a gamble. Okay, so we're tracking through, tracking through. It's a bit easier now because we're not looking at the big galactic background. Now, there are no more planets. You found them all. Yeah. There's the two I've already found, handily bracketed, which is good. But we're yep. just, we're Obviously no more in this system. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> How many more do you think there are? I, know, I reckon I there are 20 minutes worth. <laughs> uh-huh, yes, yes. Okay, so still tracking through. So you've got to be a bit patient and try and do at least one lap of the solar system, as it were. Ordinarily, if they're not binary planets, they have a ring that goes all the way around the star and that gives you a good sort of... Ah, do we see it? Do we see it? Oh, there's something there. See one? Just uh, got behind the bulkhead. Yeah. There's me trying to track it through the bulkhead. And you see another one as well? Uh, there, are, there are two parallaxing objects in, in view at the moment. I'm going to pick one and go to it. It's a bit tricky. Yeah, right, okay. See, I think I've lost it at this point, but that's fine. Because I can you, see it. Yep, there you go. You just you just point away slightly. They're, they're best seen in peripheral vision, as it were, which is where the head look comes in really yeah. useful. If you, they're really easy to see if you're going sideways past them and looking out the side window. Sidewinder's actually better than the Viper for this, because the Viper's got way more gubbins and bulkheads and stuff. Sidewinder has more of a clear view sideways. So, With a proper glass cockpit all yeah, the way around. Yeah, you want a little bubble on top of the ship, really, for this kind of thing. Okay, so we found some stuff. And... No, oh, shot too early. <laughs> <laughs> there are some other parallaxing objects in the view now. Can you see them? I oh, know, gone out of shot. One top left. Top left? Oh, I didn't find that one. <laughs> I have to go back there now. What's the system name? Yeah, so we're coming, coming up on one there. You can see them quite... The, the, the closer you get to them, the, the, the faster they'll move from the centre. There we go. Discovered! I get such an endorphin hit when I see that blue message. So now I have to... Ah, crash break. Ah, come back down, come back down. The trouble is you can only really start to see the parallaxing backgrounds at quite high high levels of sea. Quite uh, sort of 20, 30 or so. When you're down at kilometres per second, the whole thing, nothing moves really. But you have to be that kind of low speeds to actually turn for a second. Ah, you, you've got your <laughs> orbit now. Yep, yeah, there we go. Yes, yeah, so once, once, they've become, once they've been identified by the D-scan, they will display an orbit and appear in the system map. This is me then just trying to give it a name, turning it from unexplored to uh, a name. I think you have to do that to get the cash payout for them when you go to trade them in at the Universal Cartographics. Okay. Can I just say you're giving them really crap names? <laughs> I, I have no imagination whatsoever. There we go, look, three now. So there we go, so that was the gap. One, two, three. Mm, what else have we got? I definitely saw other dots moving at this point, so up we go. So point back away, ramp up to a good old... 30 or 40 C, start turning. Now, once you've got an orbit line that goes around the star, you can start to use that as a kind of track to trace along. And most planets that are also on the same ecliptic plane will be somewhere in view of that line. So if you're looking for five, try to find the orbital track for four, and then just follow it around the outside, paying close attention as you go. I think I lost the other one at this point, but I do pick it up shortly. But it's a real sort of satisfying... Ah, sort of moment when you start to see the little dot tracking across the sky. And it's not entirely dissimilar to how real astronomy works, I suppose. So they have to, you have to wait till halfway around the year so that the Earth is effectively moved across a bit. That's why I always liked about astronomy. There's an awful lot of just waiting around for half a year. <laughs> I, they do nothing in that time. They take one photo, go to the pub. Yeah, so we've got some more movement. Oh, I think I've already zoned, zoomed in on it there. That pair of dots there was acting suspiciously. I hate uh, it when points of light act suspiciously. Yeah. Oh, no, they're not points of light, of course, which means they're probably keep planets. Your eyes out. Keep your eyes out all the time. Yeah, I do wonder about this whole... I mean, in general, it tries to present a very accurate and believable astrophysical model to go and play in. You know, it's, it's a universe made up of vast amounts of nothing at all. 
with some very small details hidden in the corners. But I wonder about the apparent magnitude of these planets, whether they would be... I mean, how far away from the Earth can it still be seen by the naked eye, which is effectively what you're doing here in the cockpit? You it depends greatly... Probably not nearly... You probably can't see them anywhere near as I far away as you can in this game. But I don't know what the numbers are like for when you're in deep space. Mm. So we've got two here. There's one one planet and a moon, which is good. That'll all, that'll all count. I... The latest D Elite Dangerous newsletter had uh, a little link to an infographic someone had put together who knows a bit about this kind of stuff, and was it suggests that there is a certain hierarchy to the amount of payment you get for doing this, and it's to do with what the object it actually is, which seems unfair, because how can you know until you find it? It's not like you go out looking for black holes. I do. Well, I do as well. I haven't found one yet. Uh, Have you tried the centre of the galaxy? I'm going to go there, yeah. I've done some maths, so I, I, I'm preparing a blog post about that at the moment, and uh, by the time you see this, it'll probably be there. Um, but yeah, some truly astronomical numbers involved, uh, and it's a fast game, it really is. Far bigger than, uh, than it <laughs> realistically needs to be. I do wonder about the whole point of open play in a universe where there are, what, 100,000 players, a million players? Who knows? Um, but certainly vastly more stars there, there are many that. star systems per player yes. no matter how popular the game gets <laughs> yeah so i guess their problem if they're going to get any kind of coherent multiplayer gameplay going on is is giving people a reason to go to the same place so they'll even find each other ever again still i, I quite like the solitude of it all and just space exploration it's what i've wanted to do all my life and, and this is a reasonably good stab at it yeah I'm unlikely to get get a place on a real spaceship to go and explore remote stars in my lifetime. So you need to look left again. Oh, uh, look, 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 look left past me. Look left, left, left. left. Uh, no, he, I think I think past me is cleverer than than future present day me because I think he might have seen something. I remember I was there. Were you? Probably. I don't know. This is all pre-recorded. Apart from the bit we're talking now, which is happening now. Unless you're listening to it later, then it's pre-recorded. Then it's also pre-recorded. Oh, temporal hijinks. Okay, there's me blasting the thing. I'm getting a bit bored, I think. I like to blast the thing when I get a bit bored. But, uh, no, there's definitely more out here. Uh, yes, to your left. To the left? Hmm. I'm guessing. I think I saw something. But <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky. There's no way for me to check without screwing up this recording. <laughs> it's very tricky to, to watch someone else do this. You have to be sort of squinting at the stars yourself. But I think I do spot some more. Uh, I'll probably bring up the system map shortly to try and work out what I'm missing still. That is a bit of a cop out, that bit. In the, you can just go out, see a point of light, fly out to it, and it'll tell you that it's planet three. How does it know, you know? Yeah. Uh, you can take that and use it, which tells you you've got two more that are likely to be inside the orbit of that one, and the, the, an unknown, unknown amount that are outside the orbit. That's the thing that gets me. Not having, There's something. Yeah, you got one? Yeah. Yeah, I got zoomed in on a particular dot now. Clearly, I've, I'm a man with a mission at this point. Um, yeah, there's no way I can think of to tell for sure if you've got all the outside ones. There could always be another one further out you just haven't seen. I don't know. Well, that's a general problem in life anyway. Oh, I think so, yeah. And I'm not sure astronomers have come up with a way either. <laughs> hey, there we go, blue symbol. So found another one. And you can just keep going. Each time you find a new one, you target it. It shows you the orbital ring. You can do a big thunder on round and do a circuit. See if any more dots move further out. It's quite disturbing the rate you can decelerate in this game. I know, Where does just, energy go? <laughs> I think it's to do with space. I don't think it's you going particularly fast. I think it's doing crazy things to compressing space and so okay. on. Okay. I don't know. It's all made up space sci-fi, but they're all quite good. I don't know what I'm looking at here. No, no permits for this system because there's no civilization here. There we go. Right. So here's my map so far. Found four and a moon and some asteroid bits, and then we went out and found seven, which means we got. What are we oh, missing oh, there? Are we going to make a prediction that there's two more planets? <laughs> Go on, you can do this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I ever I ended up finding any beyond seven, but you can potentially look for, for as long as you like and as long as you have the patience for. Of course, it, the more objects you find, the more of that particular system's data then becomes worth when you go and sell it in the Starbase. Unfortunately, at this point, I'm about three or four hours of real-time gameplay jumping away from a nearest Starbase, so <laughs> it's all a bit academic at this you point. You mouse players move all weird. Yes, this is me mousing the keyboard. I haven't had any trouble. I've done some combat -y, fighty stuff and been reason well as good as I am anyway. Um, so the game is eminently playable with mouse and keyboard, I think. Yeah, but you don't get the fancy joystick. The fancy joystick's amazing. You had your set up when I arrived and it, it looked like a Christmas tree. I, I say all the colours different because it was Christmas. <laughs> Two Christmas trees, even. you got the uh, throttle thingy, too. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm founding something here. So I don't normally fly in a straight line 
like this <laughs> for very long if I haven't already found something. But ah, ah hello. Oh, what's that? That one? That one? What's that between them? Have I missed one? I think I've missed one. It's there possible. Guys, yeah. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it with your gun. Yeah, I can't shoot it from that far away. I'm, and you took I'm not, pa off. not packing planetary armament at the moment. You're not packing any armament. <laughs> I've got four of the newbie pulse laser static things front, fitted on the front. Don't tell anyone. I look quite intimidating from the outside. The police use these. Yeah. I was thinking of the Cobra Mark III, but it's a bit more expensive and, and a bit too wide, and I do have trouble with those letterboxes sometimes. This one, this one's much easier. The to Cobra get Mark III is fine as long as you come in at the right angle. <laughs> Sideways does not work. Ah, uh, it's not a problem with the Viper. Go in whatever way you like. I'm gonna try reverse docking one day. I think that'd be awesome. Good party trick. Problem I have with the Cobra is There's I no rear view mirror though. I've only got 44 uh, cargo on it at the moment. Only. Yeah. I have to take all the cargo out to fit the fuel scoop. <laughs> And I've got a whole bunch of other advanced planetary scanners I want to save up for and buy, which will make the map data that we get more elaborate and worth more. So that's like quarter of a million. Uh, and also I'm under jumps nearby Starbase. I made quarter of a million earlier. Yeah, yes, a lot of money. yes, yes. You look, you're like a man with a van, though. Where's, where's the dignity in that? Here I am out plotting the unknown. I am putting map pins in, in, in nothing. And creating civilization from the chaos. I was shifting around precious metals. <laughs> Just a dump truck with, with like scrap metal on board. I had 44 containers of uranium at one point. Hmm. Did you put them all together in the same hold? I was very careful when I landed. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I've got a, two, a gap of two and I'm still heading for a dock, which I think is between the arc of four and the arc of seven, which you can just see through there. It's hard to tell when it's all flat on. So this, this is planetary exploration for around one particular star. The other sort you'll find is when you turn up and there's like more than one star. Typically you'll only get the data for one, the one you've arrived I did at. actually find a star last night. Yeah, finding the other star is quite a challenge. It involves basically very similar techniques to this, but you're looking for a star instead of a white dot. Um, but, but the parallaxing will only happen at much higher speeds, so you'll be needing to do like hundreds of C and then start swerving. And you'll see the star moving about. Here's the other two, I think. Uh, and these are, there's another binary pair, which accounts for five and six. You go too fast. I I'm terrible at this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm vaguely aware that the little blue brackety bit on the throttle is what I should be hitting, but I just love ramming the full speed as fast as I can because that's space, spaceships, space. Why not go as fast as you can? Because you end up pancake to the side of a planet. Mm, yeah. Um. Yeah. So with the binaries, you turn up at one start. If you target that star and scan it and everything, you'll get its own orbital path around the binary. I think it's called a barycenter, the bit in the middle yes. where the, the stars both orbit around. Is. Science facts. Um, so you get possibly the, wrong science facts. Science you facts. get its orbit around that, and if you follow that orbital line across, you'll often find another star sat exactly on that yellow line, and that's generally a good bet to try aiming for. But remember to do the swerving thing just to make it parallax so that you're sure. And also, when you find the star, do the swerving thing so you don't hit it. Yes, that too. Uh, don't do what uh, a, a close associate of mine dad does and try and fly towards a, a star on the backdrop because apparently you cap out at 1500C and then you run out of power and fuel and then you run out of oxygen and you die. So, you know, yeah, good do I have to guess mortality who that is? facts. <laughs> no, not at all. Please don't. <laughs> um, yeah, so there we go. So the binaries, yeah. The problem with the binary is, is boredom, really. They are really far apart, most often between 100,000 light seconds and something like 300,000 at one point, I found, far apart. And you will have to just sit there and fly towards it. It takes quite a long time, but worth it when you get there. And then often you'll find that the star at the other end has its own little planets as well. So yeah. those systems can really rack up the uh, the score. The highest I think I've managed to cash in map data is 30,000 for one system, so... Uh, and that one had about seven stars and a whole bunch of gas giants and binary planets and moons and things. So, so you can make the money doing that. That's just one system. The problem is it takes time, and yeah, as you rightly point out, there are many much quicker ways to earn cash per hour, as it were. This is more of a, a sort of an aesthetic thing, perhaps, if you just enjoy the idea of exploration. Here's me coming in to park at a sunset. I always park at sunsets. That's the great thing about having a spaceship. Anyway, you can go to any sunset you like whenever you like. Ah, oh, there you go. A bit of lining up there. A bit of photographic work. See, it's not all, it's not all numbers and, and, and technical manuals. You should land on the planet. Well, this is the problem. I'm out 
in the middle of nowhere and there are no star bases so how do I stop playing uh, it turns out you can just drop out of frame shift and just stop and your, your little dude will be there exactly where he was next time you log on does he remain in the universe I haven't tried this yet I don't know no I've, I, I think it's been about three or four days since I last saw a player so <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder why I'm open playing yeah there we go so that, that, that little foray would probably be worth between eight and 12,000 credits, maybe less. Depends on the sorts of planets you find. And if you had the uh, better D-Scanner, it would speed up things a lot. Uh, well, the, 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 there's, there's two more upgrades for the D-Scan. They're both very, very expensive, though, for what they are. Uh, or I think what they do is just improve the range of your... <laughs> so you can hit yeah. stuff further out. The thing you want is a detailed surface scanner. Uh, and there might even be another sort of thing, because the... Uh, the um, Exploration stats on the solid, the other side panel there talks about um, number of level two and level three scans completed, and I've done none of those because I haven't got the gubbins. So there you go. Hopefully that's informative. It's uh, how to how to find stars and planets that are beyond the range of your your pingy scanner using your eyes and and parallax background. <laughs>